Hi there, I'm Gary Stearman at Prophecy Watchers with Bob and Mondo, and uh, we have a lot of exciting things to bring your way right now. You know, our lives changed on October 7th at 6.30 a.m. I was up early at the Norman Eminent Return Prophecy Summit when I got a text at 6.30 in the morning and with three letters, W-A-R, war. Wow. And suddenly, uh, our conference changed forever. And there was a, an excitement in the air, and instantly everyone realized what had happened as the news broke about war in Israel. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, everybody came up, and, and people are looking for information. And, and we immediately, hastily, wisely, had a Q&A session that morning with uh, Bill Solace and Bill Koenig. Because again, th this is the things that we've been talking about for a long time. We don't know for sure if this is the exact thing, but there's no doubt when you have this level of magnitude of a war in Israel, uh, it has the potential to be a lot of prophetic development for sure. And no one was more excited than Bill Salas oh, at yeah. the turn of events because he's been uh, writing about this and teaching this for many years now. Many, many years. And Bill Salas and all the other presenters were very, very excited. In fact, Bob, I've been to several conferences I've never seen anything that was, uh, uh, well, let's put it this way. There was excitement in the air even before we heard about what was going on in Israel. And I think that tells a story about today's world. I think there's something just beneath the surface that people want answers. Well, there are a lot of questions certainly being asked. Uh, is this the Psalm 83 war? Uh, are we about to see the destruction of Damascus in Isaiah 17? Is Iran about to get involved in the Jeremiah 50 and 51 prophecies? And uh, fortunately, we had Bill there, Bill Salas, Bill Koenig, and they were able to answer a lot of those questions. So we have a big announcement to make today. And you may have already heard about this, especially if you were in Norman. Uh, but we have planned our next event. It's going to take place in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the first uh, official Leap Year Prophecy Conference, February 29th through March 3rd at the Orlando Hotel and Conference Center, where we were just last year. We had a tremendous conference there. Uh, we had probably well over 900 people, standing room only. In fact, my wife has let me know that this year we are going to have less people to make it easier for seating. So we, uh, we have a new conference to announce, and you're going to be able to register for that event at the OrlandoProphecySummit.com. But let's talk a little bit about some of the speakers who are going to be with us. We actually have quite a few new names this year. We do, but before that, can we talk about Mondo's presentation? Because Mondo, uh, you have a, a very exciting way of looking at the events happening in Israel and linking those to Bible prophecy. I'm thinking of the Red Heifer and, and the book that you wrote. But, uh, and that's exciting because of what's going on in Israel right now. But what else have you? Yeah, well, been the, you know, about? that particular discussion, it, we, they've been, we've been told that Passover 2024 is going to be the time when they want to uh, make the red heifer slaughter on the Mount of Olives. So we have that building up over the next few months. And, and I think now with the war in Israel, I, mag they, I imagine that the heifers who were on display in Shiloh are probably <laughs> hidden away, away yeah. from that. But the, one of the other topics that I would like to discuss is, I give you the credit for it, Gary, because you originally wrote the article on it, and that's the idea of the Ten Kings. And, and I really want to give the background of that. Um, you know, there's a traditional background, but also I think there's some other things that you, again, you kind of led the way in, in thinking it out, a little bit out of the box as it relates to who are the Ten Kings, that we should be looking for the Ten Kings in one sense, if we're looking at all, we, the Antichrist comes later, but the Ten King comes prior, and that's kind of what you mentioned in your original, original article, which I'd like to develop even further. Again, and that tells us the time it is, because uh, interest, the interesting thing about Bible prophecy, and we've all noted this from time to time, is that as we approach those things that we've been talking about for years, uh, certain other little clues begin to pop up around the edges. And your uh, book on the Red Heifer, one of those little clues. People are, are working at that. Uh, the Ten Kings, who are the Ten Kings? Ten, we call them oligarchs maybe, I don't know. They're ten uh, business 
and societal leaders who are, are arising today in the world. And you know, we, we, hear, we can think of a lot of names. I'm, yes, I'm not going to name any of them. <laughs> I, I bet Mondo would probably give us a few Oh, yeah, names. I'll name some names. That's right. I mean, because I, I'm not going to say them with absolute certainty, yeah. but there's no doubt there are many figures today that are dictating to governments. Now, you think about that, private individuals yes. who are dictating to governments. When have we ever really seen that in, 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 in really history? Good point. Good point. And and we we hear names of like um, well, Bill Gates. We hear names like uh, Prince Charles. Prince Charles. We <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon Musk. Yep. And on we see. I got it started. It'll begin to roll. <laughs> It'll roll. We hear a lot of names that are beginning to, to come to the top, to come to the surface, as leaders in power, and money, and politics. And yet they're not connected or affiliated with any government that anybody knows about. Yeah. They are independent. Yeah, I want to put you on the spot real quick here. This is an, an uh, unrehearsed question. Is there one place in the entire world that you would view as the hot spot of future events, uh, one place that is precious to God? Well, of course. I mean, it goes without saying, Israel. We've talked about Israel for years. But, but is there one place in Israel? There, there is one place in Israel. It's called the Temple Mount, isn't it? It's called it? the Temple Mount. It is contested territory. Uh, it's, there has been a, a, a kind of a lid, if you will, placed upon the Temple Mount. Nobody talks about it. Nobody claims anything. Uh, we're just not, we're going to put it aside for now. And that's been the Temple Mount policy for decades. Yeah, it really has. I mean, the, and, and it's only, scripturally speaking, it's only going to get more intense and more argued. I mean, this is Zechariah yes. 12. Jerusalem is a, is a burdensome stone. It's a cup of trembling that all the nations are going to gather and fight over. And that, that's one scripture that's clearly fulfilled. And here we are. I mean, that's, we look at Israel today. That's what's happening. What, right I, uh, what I find really interesting is we talk about a lot of subjects at Prophecy Watchers, some of them related to the supernatural. We talk about uh, UFOs, we talk about the Nephilim, we talk about transhumanism, we talk about the Fed dollar, we talk about a lot of things that are happening, and certainly in fulfillment of Bible prophecy. But now suddenly, <laughs> on October 7th, the focus has changed. And this is about Israel now. This is about the apple of God's eye. I've gotten a couple of emails here in the last couple of days just from Christians who, who hate the Jewish people, who claim they're imposters, they're not real Jews. You know, the Palestinians are persecuted. You know, these are the real people who belong in Israel. And there's a lot of confusion, even in the Christian world, over what's really happening in Israel. So I think a lot of what you're going to see at our conference in February and March is going to revolve around Israel. Who knows where we're going to be in February and what we're going to see. Well, what I always tell everybody is that Satan has read the Bible and he knows what God has promised to Israel and he's against it. And it, to me, it's just about that simple. He is uh, visibly, I think, coming forth with his minions these days. Uh, they have... Uh, shall we say, representatives working on their behalf against Israel, but really it's the devil that's behind whatever, what, all the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the misery, I suppose, and the, the warlike talk and the economic chaos that's going on. And this is exactly what Satan wants, guys. And I think all of the speakers, I'm looking at the list of the people that will be there February 29th, and they all have something to say about this incredible satanic conspiracy that is pouring over the, the whole world these days, just as prophesied. And what a perfect time to have a prophecy conference. I mean, even the Norman Conference, which was just an incredible experience. We had 1,200 people there with us. We streamed many, many more people from literally all over the world via live streaming. And uh, it, was, it was a special time. In fact, Gary said he'd never seen a conference with the electricity and the interest from people about the times that we live in, which is what we're experiencing right now. So looking down the list of names, we actually have 17 speakers this year. Uh, our old favorites are going to be with us. Bill Koenig, Bill Salas, L.A. Marzulli, 
J.B. Hickson, Danny Bengigi, Don Perkins, Lee Brainerd, Larry Olison, Tom Hughes, Billy Crone. But you know, we've got five new speakers this year, which to me is really exciting because I think it's good to present the perspective of some other speakers and leaders in the community. Yes. Uh, you met Ken Michael on your recent yeah. uh, trip to Europe. Want to talk a little bit about that relationship? Yeah, if you don't know Ken Michael, he is a great guy. He works uh, with Jan Markell Ministries, and I got to spend some time with him in Europe. Very knowledgeable guy, loves the Lord, uh, very knowledgeable on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, he, he, he gives very good presentations, a great, powerful speaker. He used to be a police officer, so he speaks with a level of authority, but a very tender guy, again, loves the Lord and is all about, he, he wants to reach people with the gospel. It's tremendous. Andy Woods, uh, an old friend who hadn't been with us for the last couple of conferences, but I'm hoping we're going to be able to convince Andy to, uh, to speak on Revelation 3.10, uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible that certainly to me proves the pre-tribulation rapture. What do you think about Andy Woods? First of all, <clears throat> in addition to being very tall, <laughs> Andy is, is a student of the Word. He really digs deep, and his books reflect that, uh, that uh, research mentality that he has. And when, when Andy speaks, people listen. And it, this, I, I can't wait to hear what he said. Well, I can't wait to see a rerun of that uh, appearance on the stage when you and Andy walked out <laughs> together and didn't say a word. You know, six foot eight, five foot something, and people just sat there and you guys smiled and all of a sudden everyone started laughing. Uh, so we're looking forward to having Andy. Now, Carl Teichrib. Mm. You know, Carl has been uh, locked down in Canada now for several years and hasn't been with us. Uh, in fact, you know what the weather is like up in uh, Canada in February and March. Yikes. And when we invited Carl to the event in sunny Florida, it was kind of like, where do I sign? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> get me out of here. Uh, but, you know, Carl was actually stuck at the uh, Burning Man, you know, out in the desert in Nevada, and uh, managed to get out with his life. Um, but, you know, Carl infiltrates a lot of uh, places where, if you can believe this, they actually have conferences and teaching sessions where they teach people how to infiltrate churches, get to the pastor, get to the assistant pastor, get to the pastor's wife, get to the head deacon, and destroy the churches from within. So Carl goes to Burning Man to be a witness, to actually reach out to people who don't understand the God of the Bible. And I think Carl always has something completely fascinating to bring to the table. Uh, Mark Henry, you want to talk about Mark real quick? Yeah, Mark Henry, I mean, he, he's, he's a pastor up in Minnesota. He's also uh, does a lot of work with Jan Markell and uh, in, in some of her conferences and other things. And he, he's, again, great speaker. He, he's into uh, much of the stuff that we understand, the digital dollar, digital currency, cashless systems. So, again, loves prophecy and brings, brings again, a great message, great speaker as well. Last name on the list is Alex Newman. Now, that may be a name unfamiliar to you, maybe a familiar name to you, but Alex is an investigative journalist and he has come to us highly recommended uh, dealing with breaking news, cutting edge news, a uh, little bit of conspiracy about things that are going on in the deep state in our country. And so we're looking, uh, looking to add some new blood to the events. Indeed. Can I mention Billy Crone? You can. And, and I've got to tell you, I'm going to be watching to see what kind of jacket Billy is wearing. <laughs> <laughs> you mean what jacket Mondo is wearing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. But I'll tell you what, Billy Crone, uh, he is a ball of fire. Uh, he digs deep. He looks in places where nobody else looks and correlates what he finds with Bible prophecy in a way that nobody else does. And you, you'll be amazed and you will learn from Billy Crone. Well, he just finished his uh, third book on uh, the mystery of Klaus Schwab. Mm. And uh, I think that is the end of the series for now. Uh, but Billy has really opened a lot of eyes to the World Economic Forum. And the thing is they're planning, and you know, we, we can't do this program without talking about the Great Reset and the year 2030 yeah. and all the plans they have that are, that are culminating way faster than anyone could imagine. Um, connected to that, you've got two guys, Tom Hughes and J.B. Hickson, working on the Mark of the Beast, working on Yuval Harari, uh, Klaus Schwab's right-hand man. I mean, they are every day producing updates and news coming from the World Economic Forum that you just don't get in the mainstream media. Right. So these guys are, uh, are really 
a great source, I think, of, of updated and important information about how close we are to the end of time. How close are we? Tell us. I'll tell you how close we are. As close as today. Uh, when I leave this studio and <clears throat> I turn on the television, I know what I'm going to see, Bob. I'm going to see Israel. And I'm going to see smoke in the air and missiles. And <clears throat> I'm going to be hearing about Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran. This is biblical stuff. We're there. We're there. And you need to join us at that conference because the same events that we're watching right now, I think, will have developed into an even more dramatic position. It certainly seems like everything is coming together. I think Jan Markell coined the words, uh, the coming convergence. Yeah. And it's like everything is happening together. All the prophesied wars, the digital currency, the move towards AI. Um, you know, you wake up every day. In fact, I've been following Bible prophecy for 35 or 40 years. And all the things we looked for, even back then, I don't think we had any idea how fast all this would be coming down the pike and right. what we're saying today. February 29th through March 3rd, Orlando, Florida. And I'm going to give you a, a severe warning here. We had over 900 people at the event last year. It was a tremendous event, tremendous interest. We probably need a bigger facility in Orlando that could hold two or 3,000 people. But we've come back to Orlando this year. We're going to have 800 people registered. As soon as the first email goes out to the attendees from last year, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be overrun with people registering. If you really want to attend the event and you were not there last year, I would just suggest you register right away. Uh, we're only 10 weeks away from the conference. We're just launching now. It's going to happen very, very quickly. So if you're interested in prophecy and the signs of the times, yeah. the things that are happening, I mean, get registered now, get your hotel room now, and plan a nice little short vacation in sunny Florida. Only God knows what the future holds. And I have to say it, Formando Gonzalez, Bob Ulrich, my friend of many years, for myself, I just want to say, hey, we're watching. You be watching too.